Shri Maha, you can start. Hello everyone, I am Maha Salman and I welcome you all to the Asia Pacific Evaluation Association's first ever brown bag series on professionalization of evaluation. I'm really excited for today. This is a new uh, lunch over learn series. Um, and the idea behind this series is to quickly follow up with the WOPES, EY chapters, parliamentarians, and members of the evaluation community in the region about the progress they've made on their commitments and evaluation goals pertinent to the professionalization theme. So uh, the objectives of these uh, series or these sessions or the key takeaways are that we want all of you to keep setting goals, to keep working on the goals, get feedback and guidance uh, from each other, shared experience, learn from each other's experience, uh, use the existing professionalization products and develop new by brainstorming, by coming together, and of course, explore opportunities to collaborate and form partnerships from achieving the shared goals. So we'll be having these uh, brief, quick 30-minute uh, session every month, uh, last Friday of every month um, from this month onwards. And uh, uh, today, uh, we will be uh, learning over lunch with the uh, Slava members. And uh, for that, we have two amazing, amazing uh, pre presenters who've uh, been doing brilliant work throughout, through, throughout many years. So uh, we have uh, uh, Mr. Asela Kalugampatiya, who's the president of Sri Lanka Evaluation Association and APIA. And uh, uh, with him, we also have uh, Randika Zermain, uh, who is the co-leader uh, of uh, APIA. So I welcome you all, welcome you all once again on uh, for the Brown Bag series and for the first session. And today, we, the topic is professionalization of evaluation. And uh, our presenters will be talking about the journey of Shila. Hello, Asela. Hello, Randika. How are you both? Welcome. Welcome to the first session. So you can unmute yeah. the mic and the floor no, is yours. I will share the screen. Uh, if you can stop sharing. Uh, thank you, Maha, uh, for actually uh, proposing this initiative uh, and uh, uh, starting this uh, new initiative in this region, uh, Brown Bag Series. It is uh, Maha's uh, idea, and then we all uh, liked it and started this. Uh, and also, uh, thanks again, uh, Maha, for moderating this series. So we are happy to... Uh, uh, have uh, Sri Lanka Evaluation Association experience regarding professionalization of evaluation as the first uh, brown bag uh, session and hope you know other uh, uh, evaluation associations and uh, different countries will share their experience as well. So this is a space for any uh, country or evaluation association to come and share your experience, even learn from others. So we want to make it you know, vibrant uh, platform for experience sharing and learning on professionalization of evaluation. And we all know that professionalization of evaluation uh, is uh, 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 something emerging in many countries. Uh, so that's why we want to promote that. Next slide, please. Today, we are going to share some uh, of the achievements or accomplishments we had in Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka Evaluation Association. So we will talk about uh, some of the background uh, and uh, some of the resources we have developed and academic opportunities uh, in monitoring and evaluation in Sri Lanka. Uh, the competency assessment strategy uh, we have uh, thought of and essential process components we want to uh, uh, 
uh, have as next steps and capacity building of young and emerging graduators. What uh, have we done already, and uh, what are our plans and next steps? Uh, next uh, slide. Uh, so, Sri Lanka Evaluation Association, as you may all know, uh, that is uh, the professional network of evaluators and one of the oldest workers in the region. So, it was established in 1999. So we know that very few were there, maybe Japan, Malaysia, and uh, Sri Lanka at that time. Very few uh, workers were there. So uh, Sleva was one of the oldest workers in the region, and of course, uh, globally as well. The objective of uh, Sleva was to promote an uh, evaluation culture as an integral uh, element of the development process of Sri Lanka. So uh, throughout this uh, 23 years, uh, already. Uh, Sleva has worked with the government uh, and different other stakeholders to promote the evaluation, evaluation culture. And main focus areas are capacity building, promoting enabling environment, advocacy for evaluation, and professionalization. So professionalization is one of the main pillars of Sri Lanka Evaluation Association. But at the same time, others also contribute to professionalization like uh, capacity building. Uh, next one. Uh, when it comes to uh, evaluation community here and uh, SLEVA members, we have over 330 members. And uh, as you know, we have you know different category of members, different types of members. Majority are regular employees, mainly uh, on both monitoring and evaluation, but not specifically uh, evaluation. Uh, but uh, now the association is mainly focuses on evaluation. At the same time, association promotes both monitoring and evaluation. We have some freelance consultants uh, in addition to regular employees of different organizations working on monitoring and evaluation. Uh, also, we have very few young and emerging evaluators. Uh, <laughs> oh, hello, can you please unmute your mic? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so we have very few young and emerging evaluators uh, as members, but definitely we want to uh, promote this and have more young and emerging evaluators as part of our uh, network. Uh, only a few are practicing evaluators as we observe. So we have to, you know, really uh, check uh, how many uh, practicing evaluators are there. I'm sorry, practicing evaluators are there, but at the same time, uh, we have uh, we have observed that only uh, very few practicing evaluators with technical expertise and experience. Uh, so uh, this is one uh, uh, challenge we have because many organizations when they conduct evaluations and need external evaluators, they uh, want uh, to have uh, competent evaluators, but it is not possible for them to find uh, good quality evaluators because of this issue because many are regular employees in different organizations, only some freelance consultants, but at the same time, uh, uh, they are also not, these freelance consultants are not specifically evaluate, only doing evaluations. And at the same time, uh, uh, very few practicing evaluators, we must say. So how do we face this challenge? So professionalization of evaluation is very important and uh, academic training and competency-based training uh, are more important to have more knowledgeable evaluators in the country. Next slide, please. Uh, now, with this situation uh, and with this context, uh, Sri Lanka Evaluation Association started the process. We thought, you know, first we should see uh, what are the essential uh, areas and we identified we need to know what are the competencies needed for evaluators in Sri Lanka. So we developed the competency framework with uh, support from uh, 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 an expert in the country. Uh, so we have the competency framework now developed. And also we develop a calibration manual. This calibration manual, competency calibration manual explains how to assess uh, competencies. So that's uh, the calibration manual. So we, we have these two resources in the country. Next one, please. 
and uh, you might be wondering what is this competency framework competency framework in a nutshell uh, definitely uh, you know details are in the competency framework there are six competencies identified main competencies competency domains uh, professional practice technical uh, competence uh, contextual analysis program management interpersonal competence personal and professional development so these are uh, six competency domains and there are 43 competencies and 208 indicative behaviors. So all these are included in the competency framework. Uh, if you are interested, we can definitely share information. Uh, but we are very happy that we have the competency framework. And this was developed through uh, uh, consultations with the members and some other stakeholders. And the calibration manual was also finalized in consultation with the members and uh, uh, other stakeholders. So now these are final uh, final document, final resources uh, for us to go ahead with the provisionalization process. Next one, please. So essential components, essential process components we are thinking of to uh, go ahead from now, from here. One is to develop the assessment policy. So we have the competency framework, we have the uh, assessment, uh, how to assess competencies, the calibration manual. As Sri Lanka Evaluation Association, we need assessment policy. That is one thing we are going to uh, develop as next step. And assessment procedure, how to assess uh, a member or uh, any applicant who wants to be assessed uh, for competencies. And assessment templates, we need to have some templates, uh, tools, and appeal management system. Somebody apply for uh, the competency assessment and we assess the competencies and uh, we say, okay, this person is not uh, a competent evaluator, right? Then that person can appeal. So that is the appeal management system and competency assessment panel. So there should be a panel who is uh, uh, ready to uh, uh, assess competencies uh, or assess applicants and competency assessor guide. We also have to develop competency assessor guide, which will be used by the panel or uh, assessors. Next one. Competency assessment strategy. Uh, now uh, we have not decided whether it should be, you know, accredited evaluator, credential evaluator, certified evaluator or licensee. These are different thoughts in different countries, as you know, now in Canada, they use credential evaluator. They have the credential evaluator program. Only two, three countries maximum have competency assessment uh, uh, for evaluators. Uh, Sri Lanka, we are yet to decide which one we want to use. Uh, but most probably we might not go for the licensing, but we might think of a certified evaluator or credential evaluator, something uh, like that. Next one. So in this situation, you can see that we have some resources uh, already developed and we are going to develop uh, next steps, including those you know, essential components I mentioned. At the same time, what we have in the country. Now, uh, we have academic uh, courses in Sri Lanka, monitoring and evaluation academic courses. We have the postgraduate diploma in monitoring and evaluation. Now, this is the fifth batch we have started at the University of Sri Jayavardhanapura. And we have also developed advanced certificate course in monitoring and evaluation. Uh, we have not started, but the curriculum is now developed. And master degree in monitoring and evaluation. Uh, also now it is being developed by the same university. And Sri Lanka Evaluation Association uh, had the diploma uh, in evaluation course, but uh, only two batches were completed after the COVID. Uh, uh, we could not uh, continue that uh, because the other partner institution, the government institution could not do uh, virtual sessions. Uh, but uh, the university courses are going well and we are going to start master degree also very soon. So these are the opportunities we have. At the same time, we have a capacity building program for young and emerging educators, which is our uh, uh, one of the uh, visions for the future as well. So Randika will share that. Uh, uh, from the next slide. Sandika, over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Asela. Uh, can you hear me, Maha? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, as Asela mentioned earlier, uh, yeah, so 
and innovate, professionalize the field. The capacity building of young and emerging evaluators is critical. Uh, so in Sri Lanka in 2019, December, uh, Evaluate Sri Lanka was formed uh, with the support of SLEVA. Uh, and the main aim is to uh, create a network for young and emerging evaluators to to connect and also for, in a, for them to be able to increase their knowledge in the evaluation field and also most importantly to in Sri Lanka to create competent evaluators, the supply of competent evaluators. So over, through the partnership of Slave and Evaluate Sri Lanka, we have done certain initiatives that help to build the capacity of evaluate, uh, young and emerging evaluators, which is listed on this slide. Some of them are, we have done several training uh, training for young and emerging evaluators on career development. I, I, actually, it was one of the first uh, career development trainings in the Asia Pacific region uh, on, uh, for, on MNE, focused on MNE. And then also we have done uh, YE focus webinars for, for young and emerging evaluators. And in one of the webinars, we, we, we focused on skill building and in order to increase their knowledge. So one of them, we, for example, we had on data visualization and we had about 150 participants. And also through our events and through our social media campaigns, we try to raise awareness about the evaluation field since still there needs a lot more effort for them to know that they have the career path, to know uh, how, what the, what are the different journeys they can take in evaluation. So we do that through raising awareness and also some of the uh, materials about evaluation we share. Uh, and then we have professional development opportunities that SLEVA uh, pro uh, provides for young and emerging evaluators. Uh, so some of them are where they've got uh, practical hands-on experiences uh, and also internships with uh, the private sector. Uh, so, for example, one of the projects that young and emerging evaluators were involved to get hands on experience was an Eval Indigenous uh, funded project uh, last year where they worked with, uh, with senior evaluators as well to get experience uh, on how to do grassroots level uh, participatory methods and working closely with the Indigenous community as well. And also, uh, they have through SLEVA opportunities for mentoring and also for career advisory, since this is important that an up and coming evaluator has guidance and a mentor to guide them through uh, their professional development and their career and to show them the different paths that they can take in the evaluation field. And so, this is an example I would like to show you all of a workshop that we conducted for young and emerging evaluators on uh, capacity building training. This was organized by the Center for Evaluation in of Jaiva Tadapura, Sleva, and Evaluate Sri Lanka, which was supported by UNICEF. So this was, uh, like I mentioned earlier, one of the first ever BAE workshops that focused on career development for the Asia Pacific region. And I think after this training, we have used that modules also uh, in some of our international trainings. And uh, so the objective of these workshops are to promote and engage wise in Sri Lanka to, to be part of the evaluation field. And so in these workshops, these are some of the topics we covered. And as you can see, there's a, a lot of focus also on uh, the career development, evaluation, understanding evaluation criteria, standard norms, and participatory methods. So uh, as a young and emerging evaluator, it's important to understand the gain the technical knowledge and also the practical skills in order to be competent evaluators and also especially to learn about ethics and in evaluation as well. Uh, so these were some of the areas uh, that we covered through our trainings and this, these initiatives are uh, paving the way to help professionalize the field uh, of the eva uh, evaluation in Sri Lanka. Now I would like to pass it on to Arsena as the next steps. Asil. Yes, Randika, thank you very much. Uh, so next steps, uh, uh, we want to continue academic courses in Sri Lanka, as I mentioned. So we already have, you know, one course going on, a postgraduate diploma. And uh, so we will start two more courses, advanced certificate and a master degree. So 
when we start the master degree, I think that will be uh, kind of the only master degree in mounting and evaluation in this region. But we want more countries and more uh, universities to start uh, uh, courses and uh, continue uh, capacity building of uh, young and emerging evaluators, as I mentioned, uh, because we think that the monitoring and evaluation to professionalize it, uh, we want more young and emerging evaluators, more young people to uh, enter the profession. That is one thing. Secondly, uh, provide them more opportunities to learn monitoring and evaluation, follow academic courses, uh, and also have uh, competencies to produce good quality evaluation. And uh, also, as we mentioned, uh, there are essential instruments we need to uh, develop uh, to complete the professionalization process in Sri Lanka. So now uh, we are in the process of developing them. So we hope to have all these resources. So once these are developed, I think this will be very useful resources, not only for Sri Lanka, but other workers and other countries as well. So uh, uh, for uh, the evaluators in Sri Lanka, definitely we want them to uh, engage with us in this process and uh, uh, develop uh, all these together. So we all uh, will be benefited out of this professionalization process. And definitely in the countries, we will have, you know, uh, competent evaluators to uh, provide uh, quality evaluations. At the same time, other countries, other workers, uh, we are definitely happy to share our experience as well as learn from you and also share some of the resources we have. So we want you also to start this uh, professionalization and competency assessments in your countries. So we all can uh, make evaluation a recognized profession in our country. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Asela and Randika, for this uh, presentation. Uh, you both, uh, with the limited time that you had, uh, holistically covered everything from uh, the journey of how Sleva started working and uh, designing the competency framework and the uh, assessment criteria. And uh, you've, you've talked about uh, the academic courses, how academia is involved. You've also talked about um, uh, what sort of resources are available for the young and emerging evaluators and how SLEVA is helping them and empowering them to take, uh, take in charge of this field and, you know, uh, for their capacity building. So all in all, you've uh, shared excellent uh, resources also uh, for everybody to sort of um, uh, learn and uh, get start, start exploring and doing their own sort of, you know, uh, out of their curiosity, um, uh, learn uh, about uh, uh, the professionalization of evaluation and take inspiration, especially take inspiration from the work that Sleva has done. And uh, congratulations to uh, all the members of Sleva for being, uh, for leading um, uh, on this team in the region. So now we're basically open to the Q&A session. We're, open, we're opening the floor for the questions. So I will request all the participants that if you have any questions, you're always free to post them in the chat box. And now is the time that you can also unmute your mic and talk to our brilliant speakers. Um, and uh, we're, we're open uh, to your questions. So if there are any questions, uh, please let us know. I'm going to keep an eye on the chat box as well. Um, so I, I do have a question uh, and uh, it's up to you, Asela or Andaka, whoever wants to take up. So for any country, uh, any WOPE or EY chapter who wants to uh, develop the competency framework, so what would you suggest uh, should be the first step? Should, should they, and how much of customization is required? So. Uh, Sleva has developed one, and then other countries are also either it's in the pipeline or planning to. So what do you think? How much of it is the same and how much of it needs to be customized according to the local or the uh, uh, national, uh, um, uh, uh, based on the national context? So what do you think is how much of it needs to be general and how much of it needs to be customized? 
thank you, Maha, for the question. Yes, it's it's a very uh, good question. Now, uh, in addition to uh, the competency framework uh, we have developed for Sri Lanka, because as I mentioned, it was developed in consultation with members and other stakeholders in the country. At the same uh, time, uh, Asia Pacific Evaluation Association has kind of, you know, generic uh, version of competency framework for the region. So uh, I think any country can take it also and uh, uh, customize it to uh, own needs of the country. Uh, and uh, it is available online as well on uh, uh, the Pacific Evaluation Association website. But I would say now, uh, that's why I think, you know, uh, uh, your question is very important. In any country, you need to see what is the current situation of professionalization, the evaluator, what is their capacity, and uh, what are the needs of uh, evaluation in the country, and what is the demand for evaluation, and whether evaluators can uh, meet the demand, and what are the competencies they have at the same time, what are the opportunities they have to improve their knowledge and competencies. So this kind of you know uh, assessment would be uh, very uh, helpful in any country. So I would say uh, the WOPE or any organization interested uh, should do a kind of you know at least simple uh, assessment and based on that uh, have some consultation with uh, evaluators as well as the government and some other uh, stakeholders uh, when customizing it because. Uh, we have taken, we also have gone through uh, the competency framework developed in Canada and uh, UN, uh, UNIC, United Nations Evaluation Group, and some other organizations, including American Evaluation Association. But at the same time, we have looked at uh, what are the needs of uh, the country, Sri Lanka, and based on that, we have developed uh, this competency framework. So I think. Definitely we can look at what are the available resources out there. At the same time, see, uh, according to our needs, this is what uh, we want. So uh, balancing these two is very important. But at the same time, I don't say that we should not take any important things from other, because definitely other uh, competency frameworks are uh, useful. And uh, again, uh, feel free to use this uh, uh, competency framework developed in the region. Uh, uh, for sure. Thank you. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, uh, is there any question from the audience? Okay, so uh, there's a question. Um, Hudson is asking, is there a basic degree in m &E offered by Sri Lankan University? Uh, we don't have a basic degree. There is no bachelor degree in monitoring and evaluation. Uh, but we have uh, 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 the postgraduate diploma and we are starting the uh, master degree. Uh, hopefully next year we should be able to uh, start the master degree. But uh, the master degree will be two years and this postgraduate diploma is a one year course with a practicum and uh, there are seven modules. Uh, at the same time, what we are trying to do is now uh, include monitoring and evaluation as a module in uh, uh, different uh, disciplines, different other bachelor degrees. Because wh what we believe is that whether you are an engineer, doctor, lawyer, or any other accountant, everyone is doing a job. At the same time, you need to produce results, whatever the job you are doing. Right. So uh, if you have good knowledge about monitoring and evaluation, that would be helpful to perform your job. So that's why we are trying to advocate universities, academic institutions in Sri Lanka to include a module on uh, monitoring and evaluation. So uh, also uh, good news is that University of Sri Jawardhanapura uh, approved and now established a particular you know, uh, unit called Monitoring and Evaluation Unit. So this is the first academic unit in any university in the country uh, dedicated for monitoring and evaluation. So through this unit, we are uh, uh, going to offer these uh, courses as well as uh, we will advocate for inclusion of monitoring and evaluation in other bachelor degrees as well. But for the moment, there is no uh, uh, specific bachelor degree for monitoring and evaluation. 
thank you for the answer. So uh, we're almost out of time, but just uh, one last short question and Randik, I'm going to ask you this. <laughs> so uh, just very quickly, anything that uh, you feel that you want to, any message for the young and emerging evaluators and what they should look forward to with regards to professionalization of evaluation? Thank you, Maha, for that question. Uh, so I would say for uh, to young and emerging evaluators uh, to take um, to get involved in the evaluation field, but if they can, always uh, try to build your technical knowledge. Also, now in Sri Lanka, we have academic courses, different courses, and we have different trainings, capacity building training. Take advantage of these opportunities. And also, we have uh, our month, Slava has this monthly webinar series and a lot of excellent speakers globally come to talk about different uh, evaluation techniques and also the theories and different um, initiatives. So I, I suggest to them to join those. And there are a lot of resources out there as well. Take advantage of them. And also like Slava now when we when this competency um, framework and all were developed, uh, I think uh, Slava Asila and all got involved, young and emerging evaluators. So I would say for them also to get involved in these initiatives uh, when there, these things are happening and also uh, and for part of Evaluate Sri Lanka, we want people to come forward and take the leadership and also get involved in order to promote the field and be involved. So since time is running out, uh, that's all that I can go on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And absolutely, I will totally agree with you, Randika. So my personal experience of engaging uh, with Sleva, I have learned a lot. And I would definitely, definitely recommend everybody who's joined and uh, listening um, uh, to definitely get in touch with Sleva and uh, participate in their events. They're doing a lot of excellent work. Uh, with regards to capacity building and uh, evaluation and uh, there are many themes and professionalization is just one of them. It's a dominant theme. Uh, but definitely if you're, uh, if you, if you are passionate about this uh, field and if you're passionate about evaluation, then do get in touch with them. So again, thank you. Thank you so much, Asela, and thank you so much, Randika, for joining us today. And I'm so glad that you were able, we can, we, we were able to begin um, uh, this session with Sleva, who, uh, who has led uh, uh, and done brilliant work in the region and has been an inspiration for all the Bobes and EY chapters in the region. Uh, so before we end, uh, I would request all of you to please turn on your uh, video camera so that we can uh, take a picture together to remember this moment. And uh, we will be joining and see, seeing you again uh, in, uh, on 27th May 2022. Same time, uh, we'll be hosting these uh, sessions every uh, month on the last Friday, same time, 3 p.m. Indian Standard Time. For participating, feedback, or any qu uh, query, write to us on the email address given on the slide. So uh, for now, I'm just going to stop this screen share and uh, please turn on your cameras uh, for the group picture. And again, thank you all for joining. And uh, hopefully by next time we will be able to engage you more and we would love to hear back from you all uh, and get feedback how to improve our sessions. Uh, Maduka, can you also take a picture? And thank you uh, also to the APIA team for helping me out so much and for arranging these sessions. And uh, we're, we're, we're doing this because of all of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Maha, okay, One, two, three, smile. Thank you, thank you so much. Thanks for joining. Thank you, Maha. Thank you, Maha. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye. -bye. Bye.